jobs, working behind the bar, or a combination of both. My end goal has always been to open up space to call my own, and I'm currently working on building the early stages of branding and business structure for it. The milestones in my career so far have definitely been within the competition world of coffee. I've competed twice in the National Barista Comps. I was able to snatch first place in Nationals for Aeropress, leading to a semi-final place in Worlds. Uh, and then I jumped over to experiencing sensory judging for the last regional and national barista comps here in Canada. For me, entering these competitions is so rewarding and I see it as a huge opportunity to challenge ourselves regardless of our experiences. Which is why I'm so excited to be part of season two this year, as Leaderboard is such a fun game that challenges your ability to identify different copies. Uh, today, I'm here to provide some tips on how to brew small ratios at home to help you with this challenge. I'll be recommending some recipes using a 1 to 15 ratio that you're able to adapt to some different brewers depending on what you have at home. I'll be exploring the Blue Mellow Loveramic Stripper, the Two Cup Origami, the V60, and the Aeropress Brewer. So why 1 to 15, you may ask? Um, through many trials and errors of several different origins, I have found that this ratio really brings out clarity and flavor and expresses tactile in a way that is similar to some of the larger brew recipes that you may be used to brewing at home. I found that decreasing this ratio for smaller brews tends to mute out the acidity, not being able to achieve the most balance, while majorly increasing this ratio for smaller brews tends to decrease the overall tactile experience for me. Um, this is why I've chosen a universal recipe of 13 grams coffee to 195 grams water, giving you at least four chances to explore each mystery bag. So to begin, um, we start with excellent brewing water in order to extract as much, as much out of that coffee as possible. Um, anything from bottled water brands to minerals built for coffee like Third Wave or Peak Water, or even something as simple as doing equal parts distilled water to equal parts tap water that you already have at home. Having a solid base to start your brewing will make all the difference to your end results. Your brew recipe should be kept quite simple so that you're able to replicate it again for your other trials. For your reference, I will be using the Barazza Sete grinder with the S2 cone burr set for all of my brews. I will share an example of grind size as we all have different descriptions in regards to particle size. I'll also be working with 92 degree water for all of my brews. My go-to starts with rinsing my filter. I like to use the Hario 01 filters for smaller brews and can use it in my V60, Origami, and the Blue Mellow Loveramic stripper. I enjoy working with each of these brewers because I'm able to implement the same results due to their ability to work with cone-shaped filters. After discarding and rinsing my decanter, I start my timer as I add 65 grams of water for my first pour, letting it bloom for 30 seconds, not stirring. My second pour will be an additional 65 grams, pouring in an outer circle, then moving into the center with a heavier pour. Again, adding the final 65 grams at one minute and five with the same pouring technique. At one minute 35, I give my brewer a final swirl to incorporate any leftover particles, making the final drawdown evenly extracted. My final output is 195 grams with a finished brew time that should range between two minutes 30 to no longer than two minutes 45. Keep in mind that with a smaller dose, a shorter brew time should be expected. Okay. So after dialing in six different origins, the blue Lavaramics and the origami drippers were both very similar with brewing results, having worked in grind number 21 to 22 range on the sete. Um, they're designed with wider ridges and maximized airflow, really give similar experiences in my opinion. Whereas with my V60, um, I made two changes. 
First, I adjusted my grind to 16, working slightly finer. And then it was still lacking something. It wasn't transitioning and harmonizing from first sip to last sip. So I added five extra grams of water to really kind of open it up a little bit more, making my V60 recipe 13 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water. After this, I found the same balanced results as it was with the other two drippers. Again, if your cup is tasting intense and is lacking the balance of acid, sweet, and bitter, try to focus on the element that may be overpowering the rest and adjust one variable at a time. Because the goal is to find harmony between all three characteristics while still keeping to your desired brew ratio and also with, uh, with, uh, trying to keep within your final brew time range. For AeroPress, I will also be using a 1 to 15 ratio using 13 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water with 92 degree temp, working with grind number 20 on the sete. The principles will still be the same, keeping a shorter brew time with an added element of agitation due to the amount of contact with water in the brewing vessel. We will start by preheating our vessel while we rinse the filters. I recommend using at least two paper filters to filter out as much sediment as possible for a cleaner result. With the inverted method, start with 13 grams of coffee and add 80 grams of water for 40 seconds, giving your AeroPress a vigorous swirl as your coffee deoxidizes. Have a stirring utensil ready for your next pour. Add the remaining 120 grams of water, giving your brew a few stirs. Keep in mind to stir the same amount of times for each trial. Cap your lid while your coffee has been brewing for 40 seconds. At 1 minute 20, you will flip and swirl your device onto decanter and plunge evenly for 40 seconds giving you an end time of two minutes for total brew time. I hope my brewing guide can help you with scaling down your recipe to a smaller dose and wishing you all the best of luck for season two with Leaderborn. Always remember to keep your brew recipe consistent and simple using the same recipe and brewing water to really achieve the maximum amount of clarity in flavors so that you're able to taste as much as you can to identify these coffees. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions regarding my brew recipe. Uh, you can find me on social media at El Cortado via Instagram. And finally, for this fun challenge, here are some tips for you to do your best. I mean, definitely utilize your other senses before brewing and tasting your coffee. I mean, you can evaluate visually to give off, to get any clues on the different origins, varietals, or processing methods. Don't forget to evaluate the aromas of your coffee before and after the grinding stage, as this also is another stage in the brewing process where you're able to find clues on what the coffee may be. Um, don't forget to taste your coffees as they cool. I mean, I prefer tasting my coffees at room temperature. And then don't forget to explore the world of decaf. Um, you never know what leaderboard is going to throw in those mystery bags. So yeah, always remember to trust your instinct, evaluate slowly, and have the most fun. Thanks guys.